Welcome back to the Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting every Monday through Friday. Today we're diving into Tubi is turning 10 years old. Um, it's a very important streaming service in the world of core cutting. It's had a big impact. We'll tell you what that is. There's more free over-the-air television coming to more markets. Charge is now available in a ton of new markets. We'll tell you um, why this is happening and where you can find these new channels. And the Roku channel has a new exclusive TV show coming from the WWE. These stories and a whole lot more coming up in a quick minute. First though, if you like what we do here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here so YouTube can recommend our videos to more people, helping us grow. If you wanna learn more about any of the stories I'm about to talk about, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, I'll put a link to each story there so you can read them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. With that said, let's dive into it. Tubi, as of April 1st, is now 10 years old. It is a huge accomplishment for the little streaming service. It started off as an independent company and is now owned by Fox Corp. Now, a lot of people are, assume Disney owns Tubi because of the Fox deal, but no, Disney bought the studios. They did not buy the Fox local stations, the Fox Sports Networks, or the Fox News Network, and the um, Fox's ownership of Tubi remained unchanged. So Fox owns Tubi, and it's a great place to watch a ton of Fox content including local Fox News um, from your local Fox affiliate, but it also has hundreds of live TV stations and thousands of movies and television shows available on demand. It launched one day after Pluto TV did. We talked earlier about how Pluto TV turned um, 10 years old over the last weekend. Now it's Tubi's turn. Part of the maturing of cord cutting. It feels like these services just launched, but it's hard to believe it's been 10 years now since these services launched and 10 years since Cord Cards News launched. It's very interesting to see how everything kind of is all maturing about the same time. I wanna hear from you. Do you use any of these free ad supported services? Not just Tubi, uh, Pluto TV or more. These free ad support services are very popular. Freebie, the Roku channel and others. And it's really helped cord cutting grow and move forward. Uh, increasingly, I'm hearing from core cutters that are cutting back on paid services and helping supplement their core cutting by using these free ad-supported streaming services. So leave me a comment, let me know, do you do that? How important is it to your core cutting journey? And how often do you use them? That's my question of the day. All right, Charge, which is owned by Sinclair, is a action movie television um, station out there. Well, they've struck a new, de a new deal with ABC to bring charge network to more than 100 markets coming this fall so this fall charge be in more than 100 markets on the abc owned television stations diginet so these are those smaller stations like the 3.2 3.3 um, for example station numbers that you will see um, if you use an antenna now charge is going to be coming in more and more of these charge has already been available in quite a few markets especially Sinclair owned markets, but now it's coming to more than 100 additional markets this fall. We do not have an exact date for when this will roll out, but Charge offers programs like Law and Order Criminal Tent, CSI and Y, and other um, popular um, movies and television um, shows now available on the ABC networks across the United States. Check this out. Again, we don't know when this fall, but it's coming this fall one more small digit net available nationwide. Check it out, link in the show notes down below if you wanna learn more. And when it actually goes live in some of these markets, and I suspect there'll be one of those things where it come out in stages where a couple markets will get it and then a couple markets will get it a few days later kind of thing. I don't know if this is gonna be a single flip of the switch day where on you know, August 31st or September 20th or something, everything switches at once, I don't know. All right, the Roku channel and WWE teamed up um, for a new docu-series. Now, they announced this a few months ago, but it is now live on the Roku channel. This new documentary series will follow a group of men and women competing to earn a spot to become a WWE superstar. This will follow beginning WWE stars who want to work their way up and become a, um, a superstar, earn their spots in the WWE franchises there. It's a really cool documentary. Check it out. It's now available on the Roku channel. If you're looking for what's new this week, tons of content's coming out. It's the start of April, so it makes this week particularly busy of new programs. We have a breakdown of many of the most popular streaming services, including Disney+, Netflix, and others, all with what's new this week. 
go over to cordcuttersnews.com. Check out the home screen there because there's so much out there with what's happening with that. All right, a little bit of a slow news day, April 1st. I would often joke that news, when it's April 1st, people avoid news stations and news networks as they're sick of the fake news kind of stories out there that people uh, create to be humorous that just upsets people. But a lot of little news stories out there. A few other things to keep an eye on. Warner Brothers Discovery had several board members resign um, recently after the DOJ is launching anti or an investigation. These board members also own a significant portion of Warner Brothers Disney stock, and they're looking to see if those um, investors and board members violate any of the rules. Now, it seems like for some of this, it's kind of an issue of, well, when they owned a little bit of Warner Brothers Discovery and they owned a little bit of Discovery, and when the merger happened, maybe they went over the minimum or maximum amount there. We'll have to see. These are people you probably never heard of. They don't hold significant positions in Warner Brothers Discovery leadership, though they do sit on the board, which has a pretty potent power there. But they're not like the president of the board or the vice president of the board or chairman of the board, wherever they may call themselves there, or chairwoman, or I don't know, whatever they may call themselves. You're going to see a lot about this story. I don't think this is a big deal. These kind of investigations are pretty common in publicly traded companies. There are certain rules you have to abide by if you're on the board, how much you can own, what you can do, and the like. And this may be one of those things where no particular malice was meant, it, but that they may have, because of the merger of the two companies, gone over a limit that they didn't really think about or realize when they were welcomed on the board and all their numbers were checked then. But Warner Brothers Discovery is going to be under investigation for this. Look for a lot of people to try and make this into a bigger thing than it is. These things are normal. This is a pretty small thing, even if they broke the rules minor slap on the risk thing and it's more about those individual board members and i think about the company so i wouldn't i wouldn't read too much into that so keep that in mind all right let's dive into the question of the day i get questions all the time and we try to answer them here on cork um, cutting today if you have a question you would like me to answer leave me a comment start off with something like a question for luke so i know it's something you want me to answer here now I, one of the big comments i've been getting recently is I am you know, from Canada, UK, Australia. Hello to our big viewers there. I know Canada is one of our biggest. Australia and United Kingdom are also some of our biggest places people watch. If you're from anywhere there, leave me a comment, let me know. But how come like Disney Plus um, or Netflix and the like have different catalogs of content? Even though it's a Disney Plus owned show or a Paramount owned show, once Paramount's rolling out or Max as it's rolling out, how come their catalogs are different in different countries, even though it's all owned by the parent company of that service? Well, the truth is they don't. Some of that content you think would be owned by Paramount or Warner Bros. Discovery or Disney, it's actually just licensed. Sometimes it's international content. They license the stream in the United States under their own name. Uh, for example, when um, for a long time, a lot of the Paramount Plus Star Trek content streamed on other streaming services in the UK, Europe, and all around the world. Um, I can't remember if it was Netflix or Amazon Prime Video. Somebody leave me a comment that um, the early Star Trek shows would appear there for like Picard, uh, Discovery, and the like. That often meant though it was like a little bit delayed from when we would get it. Well, what happens there is the license, license and for example, you know, Paramount may have struck a deal to say, hey, these Star Trek shows for the next five years are going to be available in the United Kingdom on Amazon or Netflix. If we launch in uh, the United Kingdom, we can't necessarily just pull those shows back. We've signed a contract. And for services like Paramount, that's a quick way to get money. They get quick upfront money from the streaming services or other TV networks to air their programs they made for the United States market air nationally but they have to honor those contracts until the end of the contracts, The reason, one of the big reasons why it's different content. For example, Netflix may have rights to Family Guy in the United States back in the day, but when I traveled to uh, Korea, you open up Netflix and the catalog's completely different. You have stuff there we don't have and stuff we have, they don't have. And it's all licensing. Each country has different licensing deals and different rights to different content. So there you go, I hope that makes some sense. It's not unusual to see something listed as an ex a Netflix original or Disney Plus original or whatever original in the United States 
when it's really produced by other countries or other studios in other countries, we're just the exclusive home of it on that particular streaming service for the United States and vice versa. Hope that makes sense. It's one of the most common questions I get. Let me know. If you like what we do here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Look for more videos like this every Monday through Friday and with special videos sometimes throughout the week with breaking news, reviews, how-to guides, and more. Until next time, take care, be safe. We'll be back again real soon.